1973 Travco Dodge Motorhome was prominently displayed in the Hollywood movie called Lady Ice. Just in case you own one of these vintage beauties, uh, 1970s Travco Motorhome, they are famous. Anyhow, it was in the movie Lady Ice, and you need to see the movie. Donald Sutherland uh, stars in the film, along with Robert Duvall. And, well, I hate to do this to you, but at the end of this video, I'm going to include my movie review over on my other channel called Hidden Spotlight Treasures. I do movie reviews, and I did one on the 1973 movie called Lady Ice, and that's where I found out that they had this uh, Travco motorhome in there. It's a beauty. These uh, motorhomes, they... Uh, Dodge made them from 1965 up until the late 80s. They had a fiberglass body over top of metal. Now the luxury model, the luxury 27-footer in the early 70s was called the Dodge Mahal. Yeah, Dodge Mahal. That's pretty crazy. And even in this 1973 movie with, uh, with uh, Donald Sutherland, it even gives us some glimpses of the interior of the motorhome so i'll show you some of the pictures of the interior as i talk about this iconic motorhome it's kind of uh interesting uh, ray frank ray frank was very instrumental in the design of the early 1960s dodge motorhomes and he was influential in the fiberglass over steel construction ray frank he coined the phrase uh he coined the term motorhome I thought that was very interesting. So because of this motorhome in the early 1960s, and Ray Frank was involved with it, he coined the term motorhome. When his company went bankrupt in 1963-64, uh, Travco bought his molds and his patents and the rights, and voila, Travco was born, probably somewhere around 1964. So again, for all you Dodge connoisseurs of motorhomes, here you have Donald Sutherland crawling out of a Travco 1973 Dodge motorhome in the movie Lady Ice. Now, I forgot to add this in the movie review, which you're going to watch here in a moment, the movie review. Here are the star of the movie, co-star. Her name is Jennifer O'Neill. She's been apprehended at the airport, and they think that she got drugs, and they're going to do her a strip search. It's kind of interesting. They got a couple lesbos there, and they take her clothes off, and they're look, look at her. They're looking at her like, hmm, 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 hmm. Interesting scene in the movie. So here we go, the movie review. Welcome back to another Bravo movie review. Today we're going to be talking about Lady Ice, a 1973 crime jewel heist flick starring Donald Sutherland, Jennifer O'Neill, and Robert Duvall. Some people seem to think that this movie was bad. I disagree. This movie gets better with age, like wine, because of the southern Florida footage beautiful vintage 1970s Italian sports cars. You get the feel of how life was before the FBI, the Homeland Security, and every other alphabet company out there was breathing down our neck with surveillance. And uh, you can't, today you can't even shit in the woods without some young NSA punk filming you and uh, recording the fart sounds. And I tell you, uh, this movie personifies the laid-back 1970s, wise-cracking Donald Sutherland. He lays it on thick. She wanted a fortune in diamonds, and he wanted her. Is this a James Bond masterpiece? No. But I do think it is worth watching, if not for anything but the beautiful vintage cars and the underwater scuba scene with Lady Ice. Most of us film connoisseurs and movie lovers, we know of Donald Sutherland and his great acting, but a lot of us, a lot of people don't know about Jennifer O'Neill. Now, Jennifer O'Neill, she's the beautiful co-star of the movie. She was born in 1948 in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Her mother was Anglo, father was Brazilian, Portuguese, and Irish bloodline. She was raised in New York and Connecticut. 
She was a model, a model who graced the covers of Vogue and Cosmopolitan, and apparently she's one of the few models who can, a can actually act. Yes, I do believe she puts in a good performance here. Like I say, don't believe everybody. I everybody says, this is a bad movie, bad, bad, bad dialogue. No, no, no. Like I said, 1970s vintage, it's like vintage wine. It gets better with time. No, it's not a masterpiece, but I do believe you'll, uh, you'll get a kick out of watching this, for any, even if for nostalgia reasons alone. Now, of course, Robert Duvall is in this movie, now, and everybody wishes that, yes, the director would have utilized Robert Duvall much, much more. I mean, Robert Duvall is a legend as an actor, and he should have been, uh, I don't know, it, he should have been given more juicier pieces in the movie. You're also going to remember Perry Lopez. Uh, Perry Lopez from his role in Chinatown. Get him out of here. It's Chinatown, Jake. Come on, Jake. It's Chinatown. Let's get out of here. Oh, anyhow, you're going to recognize Perry Lopez. Surprisingly, people may not realize uh, Perry Lopez, his acting goes all the way back to 1954. And then uh, after the Chinatown role in 1974, he disappeared for about 13 years. Not sure why, but he uh, he's a, a good actor, and he plays the uh, he plays the normal incompetent cop role. Maybe he got tired of playing incompetent cops. Maybe took a break, a little vacation from Hollywood. Well, what can a director teach us about movie making other than including Lots of local beautiful scenery for future generations to admire, and well, including well made Italian sports cars. And talking technically speaking here, 35 millimeter film wise, well, the director, Tom Grease, I think he can teach us about making movies. And uh, well, how about this? How about he can tell us how, in less than 55 seconds, how Donald Sutherland's character can go out there scuba diving out in the beautiful Florida waters and then come back to his apartment. And he can do this very, very quickly in about 50, less than 55 seconds. And of course, when he gets to the apartment, there are gangsters ripping his crib apart looking for diamonds. And of course, we're in, my, we're in the Miami area. So the gangster must be a Cubano style. Uh, there's no wasted film here. The director can teach us a lot about not wasting film. When you know they had, they were dealing with 35 millimeter back then. It was not digital. And I know I've been rambling on for a while now, but I, I did forget to say, uh, well, what's Donald Sutherland's role in this movie? He plays an insurance investigator who becomes involved with a beautiful young lady who he suspects is a uh, is fencing stolen jewel jewelry, and of course, of course, he falls for her. This movie was offered to a young George Lucas to direct it back then, but George, uh, he turned it down. Back to Sutherland's role in the movie. Again, he's an insurance investigator. He inserts his life into this woman's life. He actually even becomes a, he works in the garage. The young lady comes from money. She's kind of rich. Her daddy owns a car dealership there in Miami and he actually gets a job as a mechanic in the garage work and it's a good there's a pretty uh, interesting funny scene uh, he's working in the garage the first couple weeks he's trying to get involved with this lady somehow because he suspects her of being the fence for valuable jewelry she comes cruising on in with her Maserati sports car and she says to him after jumping out of her car and getting his attention, she says, Hey, the steering is off, and so are the carburetors. Check the alignment because it's pulling to the right. And, oh, by the way, wash it. <laughs> Southern, look, Southern looks at her and says, uh, Screw you. She then turns around and smiles and said, uh, You'd like to, wouldn't you? And uh, that was kind of starts off uh, one of the scenes. But then later on in the movie, after the Cubano guy beats him up in the apartment, she shows up and then she tells him, hey, I think you're in over your head. And uh, that she says, I can't help you. He smiles and says, uh, but you'd like to. She, uh, she gently smiles at him and walks away. Hey, if anyone out there knows who the Cubano character is, hey, please leave a comment below. 
And guess who else has a pretty good little role in the movie? Eric Braden. Now, uh, yeah, he has a pretty good part in the movie. And in 1980, Eric Braden, he started his 40-year run as Victor on the Young and Restless uh, soap opera show. Can you imagine? 40 years. 40-year run. And starting in 1980, this guy here has played Victor on the Young and Re Restless. 40 years. Uh, kudo to him. And adding a little realism to the movie, the director makes sure that the jewelers, there's two brothers and the jewelers who can cut the holes in the diamonds and they basically change the diamonds so you cannot recognize them because they're stolen diamonds and drill a hole here, do a little bit. Well, of course, they have to be two Jewish guys because, of course, the Jewish uh, people, they sort of, uh, they have a, a lock on the diamond business, you know, as master jewelers. So anyhow, this is a, I give this movie a 7 out of 10 bravos. I mean, for nostalgia kicks alone. Uh, some of the scenes they have in the sh Chicago, where the jewelry is being stolen, is in Chicago, and then they end up flying to Miami. Uh, I think you'll enjoy this movie. Again, if for nothing else, then uh, nostalgia kicks.